Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to 32 Manias with Mike. Uh, now, this might be the one a lot of you guys have been waiting for. It's WrestleMania 17, or as it's colloquially called, WrestleMania X7 from the Houston Astrodome, where they had over 69,000 people there. Yeah, a lot of people. Or 67,000. It, it, it's a high number. It was a Reliant Astrodome indoor attendance record. Um, now, a lot of people, you know, in the internet circles, say this is the greatest WrestleMania of all time. I don't know. I don't know. Um, is it a great WrestleMania? Absolutely. It's fantastic. Um, I don't know if it's the greatest of all time. We, I, I will revisit this because I still got oof, oof, a bunch more WrestleManias to go. Um, but right now, I think it's kind of it's, it's up there with a few of the other ones. I really like 16. Uh, 10's a really good one. There's a, bu there's a few that are still sticking up in my brain. Um, but all right, so let, let's, let's do how we normally do. And we'll start off with the intercontinental championship match. Uh, we got Chris Jericho going up against the commissioner of the WWF, William Regal. Awesome to see, uh, this, the promo package for this feud again. This one was really fun. This is when William Regal's in his full on don't besmirch me mode. I think we get the Duchess of Queensbury rules match after this. It's a lot of fun stuff in this one. Um, but, you know, it's kind of a shorter match, and Jericho does get the win. So uh, Jericho defends the Intercontinental title. Not something that happens that often at WrestleMania, believe it or not. The Intercontinental title changes hands a lot. Uh, very few people have been able to defend it, especially going back through these. Like, I think the only person I can remember that, act that defended the title was Shawn Michaels and the Ultimate Warrior. That's all I can think of right now. Every other IC title match I think I've seen has it's changed hands. Um, but yeah, so it's a pretty exclusive company. But uh, moving on, we get a six man tag team match. Uh, it's Taz and the APA with Jackie, uh, a couple of Hall of Famers in that group now, going up against Right to Censor, the Good Father, Val Venus, and Bull Buchanan with Steven Richards in their corner. Uh, if you don't remember Right to Censor, the WWF was going through kind of like a, a war against the parent-teacher council, and uh, the Right to Censor was kind of the response to that. Funny gimmick. Um, but Taz and the APA, they just steamrolled these guys, like very, very clearly. Uh, this, is, this is a filler match, you know. Nothing, nothing too crazy to speak of, but Taz and the APA get the win. Now we move... Uh, to our second championship match. You got the hardcore championship match, a triple threat. Raven is the champion, uh, making his WrestleMania debut, going up against Kane and the Big Show. This match is a lot of fun. Unfortunately, not a lot of it takes place in the ring. Um, they, they go backstage all over the place. It's almost like they're fighting through a couple sets, which is kind of funny. Um, Kane and Big Show are putting each other through walls. Raven gets tossed through a window. Probably the funniest image from this match as a whole is Kane driving a golf cart, a golf cart with the referee on the back. It's it's really a lot of fun. It does end up coming back out to the stage as most hardcore matches do. And um, Kane pins Big Show by basically choke slamming him off the stage. Uh, yeah, but it, it was it was a really fun match. Um, definitely not as fun as the hardcore gauntlet that we got um, in WrestleMania 16. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the next match for the European Championship, Test is defending against Eddie Guerrero, who has Ferry Siren in his corner. And this is a classic Eddie match. Uh, lying, cheating, stealing, even though he's not saying those things essentially yet. But uh, Eddie basically cheats to win, gives Tess a low blow. You know, you know how that goes. And Eddie wins the European Championship, which is awesome. Um, Eddie Guerrero, you can, you can still tell. Eddie's awesome. Test is great. Uh, he has a great big boot. I I've always liked watching Test work. He was like a more athletic Kevin Nash, but with half the charisma. So, yeah, I mean, it was kind of fun. Um, now, this next match, this is... I was trying to remember the storyline for this match, and I remembered this match, Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit, this this the basic story of this match is 
a couple weeks before WrestleMania, Kurt Angle comes out and says, I don't have a match at WrestleMania. What the fuck? I'm Kurt Angle. And that that's literally the impetus for this whole thing. And Chris Benoit comes out and says, well, you don't have a dance partner. I don't have a dance partner. How about we wrestle at WrestleMania? And that's it. Really, like, uh, then they, they, you know, the feud starts from there, and they they have a pretty technical match for the most part. Uh, it degenerates into brawling at some point, and um, a lot of reversals. I mean, it's Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit. You've seen these guys work before. You know they know each other's moves inside and out, and it's really, it's a good match. It's almost fifteen minutes long. It's one of the longer matches on the card. Um. It's it's really, really fun for what it is. And Kurt Angle gets the win by pulling the tights on Chris Benoit. So, uh, you know, kind of nefarious method, but Kurt Angle kind of gets a little measure of revenge from last year, which is good because I think Kurt Angle, you know, need, need a WrestleMania win at this point, especially since he didn't have the storyline. Um, The next match is, it's a weird one. It's uh the women's championship match, Ivory. Uh, is the champion going in. She's part of the right to censor at this point. And she's going up against China. Now, the story for this match was that the right to censor injured China at one point, I think because of a Playboy shoot. Not entirely positive. It was something like that, but they injured China. And um, when China came back, she wanted to go after Ivory. It's effectively the end of the women's championship for a while because shortly after this China had her contract disputes and whatnot and she left them to be because China defeats Ivory pretty easily it's shorter it's the shortest match on the card um but yeah uh this this is the last big moment for China at WrestleMania so that's kind of unfortunate but at least she went out you know winning a championship and that's that's always a good thing uh, but now we move to one of the feature matches. There, there are a couple feature matches on the show, at least, at least three or four. Um, but now, now I don't know if I'm going to say this is the greatest WrestleMania, but I will say this WrestleMania is the WWS victory lap. And what do I mean by that? Literally, like a week or so before this WrestleMania was when WWF bought WCW and they did the whole the con the name of the contract does say McMahon but it says Shane McMahon because Shane and Vince they're having a feud already they're going to have a match at WrestleMania a street fight with Mick Foley as a special guest referee and they decided to amp this up by having Shane be the one to buy WCW and this whole match like it's just a victory lap like it's really great like you see Shane come to WrestleMania in a limo with a license plate that says WCW won, which is ironic because WCW lost. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's great. Like, uh, and all right, let's get to the match. The match, oh, so much going on. In this match, we have we have Trish Stratus, who's supposed to be Vince McMahon's mistress, wheeling a comatose Linda McMahon out to ringside. Stephanie is in the corner of her dad with a a black onesie that says daddy's girl on it there's a lot going on uh so and not to mention mick foley is a special referee because of a contract he signed with under mcmahon months before she went catatonic yeah wrestling is weird you guys it's just weird uh but basically it's a whole plot Trish was getting ready to turn on Vince. She didn't up Linda McMahon's dosage. Linda McMahon kicks her husband in the balls. Shane McMahon hits him with a trash can. And Shane goes coast to coast and beats his dad um, with the event, with the Shane Terminator. I think they just call it coast to coast now, but I always called it Shane Terminator. But yeah, a uh, really fun match. They, they beat the crap out of each other. I mean, it's it ain't a technical masterpiece. But it's also not bowling shoot ugly, as some people would, would call it. But yeah, really, really fun match. If you haven't seen it before, uh, and Shane McMahon, I didn't mention this at 15, but Shane always breaks out the awesome jerseys for WrestleMania, and this one says, Vince, we have a problem, because they're in Houston. Get it? You get it. Okay. So, moving on, uh, we have a first for WrestleMania. We have Edge and Christian versus the Dudleys versus the Hardys. That's not the first. The first is that this is a TLC match. Yes. It's the second TLC match. The first one was at um, SummerSlam the previous year. 
But uh, this one has a little bit of a wrinkle in it because Edge and Christian, they have their buddy Rhino around. Bubba Ray and Devon, they have their cousin, their brother Spike around, and the Hardy Boys, of course, as you know, has Lita. And they all make an appearance. Uh, th- this match is nuts. There, there's spears off ladders. There's people going through tables. It's it's really crazy. Um, Rhino ends up being the biggest help here. He um, helps Christian up the ladder to get the tag team titles. And Edge and Christian, who are now heels, full-on heels, win the match. Yeah, really great. If you haven't seen this before, I... Me talking about the spots doesn't do it justice. You actually have to see it. Like there, there's one blown spot in it, but other than that, it's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. So um, now we move on to something that I wish they would bring back, and I'm not even joking about this at all. It's the gimmick battle royal. And before we get to the gimmick battle royal, um, I've talked about the announcing. The announcing might be one of the reasons that this the greatest that this might be the greatest WrestleMania of all time because it's not King and Lawler. Um, it's King and Lawler. It's not King and Jr. It's Jr. and Paul Heyman. That's right. Paul Heyman is the commentator for this whole WrestleMania, except for this match. This match we bring out Mean Gene Okerlund and Bobby Heenan, fresh off their WCW stint. Again, the victory lap. They even showed like a few WCW contracted wrestlers in a skybox. They didn't say who any of the names were because WWF really didn't get any of the good WCW wrestlers when we started out. No Booker T doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's sad but true. The only one I recognized was like Hugh Morris and Sean O'Hare. Not exactly what you want to promote. But anyway, the gimmick battle royal. Um, you got Bobby Heenan and Mean Gene on commentary for this. They're fantastic as you would expect there would be. So let me run down the list of people in this gimmick battle royal. You got Repo Man, Gobbledygooker, Tugboat, Earthquake, Kim Chi, Luke of the Bushwhackers, Butch of the Bushwhackers, Jim Cornette, Duke the Dumpster Grocery, The Goon, Nikolai Volkov, Doink the Clown, Michael P.S. Hayes, which I'm pretty sure is his only WrestleMania match ever. Welcome to the Hall of Fame, Michael Hayes. One Man Gang, Kamala, Brother Love, Sergeant Slaughter, Hillbilly Jim, and of course, the Iron Sheik. Friend of the show. But yeah. Well, I want them to do this again. I really do. I want them to get gimmicks from the 90s and the early 2000s. I want Sean Stasiak in. I, I want I want every weird-ass gimmick we can think of. Like, I want to see if we can get Chavo Guerrero, have him be Kerwin White for a time. Like, I, I need to see his stuff. I want to see Muhammad Hassan in... Fuck. Like, let's bring back Spirit Squad, guys. Let's. There's so much we can do. Bring back May Young, May and Mark Henry's hand child. Like, just have that person wrestle. That'd be amazing. I really want to see an Argument Battle Royal. Um, but the Iron Sheik, of course, won the Gimmick Battle Royal because I'm pretty sure the Iron Sheik is the only guy in this ring who cannot take an over the top rope bump. Yeah, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure. By the way, Hillbilly Jim looked amazing. Looked amazing. Uh, it's also kind of funny. This it was exactly uh ten years since Slaughter was in the main event, and this was his next WrestleMania. Uh, like, it, it was kind of funny because there was a little bit of Slaughter in uh, She Keat, which was uh, cool. It, it's good, to, and they referenced it too. Like, they actually made us aware. Like, oh yeah, ten years ago, like we were in wartime. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. That's that's really good. But now we get uh to to the 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 dessert. Of this pay per view, the last two matches. Um, first you have Triple H versus The Undertaker. Guess who wins? Kidding. Undertaker wins, of course he does. But damn, this match is fun. This match is really good. Um, I've made no secret about it on the Wrestling Mayhem show. I think I mentioned it in WrestleMania 2000. American Badass Undertaker is my favorite Undertaker. It's not ministry. It's not old school gray gloves with the body bags. It's not purple gloves. It's not face mask. It's not even now. It's not WrestleMania 20, the rebirth. It's not. It's none of those. American badass Undertaker is my favorite Undertaker. He just is. I feel like he's more of a well-rounded character with the American badass gimmick. And Taker comes to the ring with Limp Biscuit. The Limp Bizkit roll-in song. He speeds his motorcycle down that long-ass entranceway. 
Triple H gets played to the ring by Motorhead. Like, this is a good match. It's it probably has the coolest visual of any WrestleMania when Taker and Triple H fight to a camera setup in the middle of the crowd, and they're actually fighting on that, and they're surrounded by fans. Like, it's really, really cool. It's very, very cool visual. If you haven't seen this match before, I think it's the best of their three, personally. Um, Just because... Because this was the first time that they mentioned The Undertaker's undefeated streak. This is the first time they mentioned it. They haven't mentioned it in, in anyone before. Not even when he beat Sid for the title. And right now, Taker's 9-0 and after being Triple H. I wonder when he'll lose that streak. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really, really, really fun match. Uh, I highly enjoy it. I think I enjoy it more than the main event. And the main event's really good, too. Uh, but speaking of that main event, let's talk about it. Stone Cold Steve Austin going up against WWF champion The Rock. Oh, Texas is a hot crowd for this match. Holy crap. They want Stone Cold to win in the worst possible way. And ironically, that is how Stone Cold wins in the worst possible way. By turning heel and siding of Vince McMahon. And just winning with a bunch of chair shots. That's how it wins. Like, and uh, this was made a no DQ match through announcement from Howard Finkel. It was not a no DQ match as booked. So, like, uh, they they were they were hinting that something different was going to happen in this match. And I mean, the match is great. Austin and Rock beat the crap out of each other. They're both bleeding by the end. Like, um. Turnbuckle covers ripped off. The ring bells used. Chair shots galore. They each try each other's finishers a bunch of times. There's a bunch of sharpshooter spots. They pull out a lot of different spots from old WrestleMania matches too. Like there's one point where um, Austin locks in the Million Dollar Dream, which he did, which he hadn't used in a while, and The Rock tried to use the finish from the Roddy Piper Bret Hart match from WrestleMania Eight, and it, it doesn't get the win, but it's really really cool. Like to see them pull out spots like that. There's definitely the spot where um, where Bret had Austin in the sharpshooter, and he does the same like pull up. You know, the only thing that sucks is in the sharpshooter spots they have rope breaks. I think everyone forgot that it was a no DQ match, and rope break doesn't mean shit. But what are you gonna do? Um, this was over ten years ago anyway, so it doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, so Vince McMahon comes out and screws the Rock for the second year in a row. I never really realized that until I watched these two basically back to back. Um, it kind of it kind of indicates that maybe the Rock is going up against Vince McMahon at WrestleMania 18 or X8 or whatever they call it. Um, I mean, unless, you know, something totally unbelievable happens, like, I don't know, an icon returns to WWF or something. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Something might happen like that. It does. Uh, but, yeah, so Austin completes his heel turn. Texas is not happy about this. Uh, not happy at all. It's, it's, it, it's a weird decision. I mean, we wouldn't have gotten all the cool – Angle and Austin stuff we got if this hadn't happened. So, you know, a lot of people can say it shouldn't have happened. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. We got the two-man power trip out of this, which is cool. Uh, we got a few good things out, but this also led to the match that caused Triple H's injury. So, who knows where this would have gone if it, if Austin had not turned heel at this WrestleMania. But, um, so we will see you at WrestleMania X8. I believe that is in Toronto Skydome. I know it is because I actually went there. More on that in the next installment of 32 Manias of Mike. Uh, but if you want to contact me, you can hit me up at madmike4883 on the Twitter machine. Leave some comments in this YouTube. Hit me up on the Facebook. Hit me up on the Twitter at Mayhem Show with the hashtag MM if you want to talk about WrestleMania X7. Try and convince me why this one's the best of all time. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to withhold my judgment until I watch all of them again. And then... I will have a definitive uh, best of all time, I think. This is in the running, though. Definitely top five. Definitely top five. Very easily in the top five. But uh, we'll see. All right. So uh, for Mad Mike, I'm Mad Mike, and this has been 32 Manias with Mike.